Over the years, I've tried to coach people how they can get into a position where they can maybe hear more promptings from God. And this gets a little on the practical side of things, but sometimes that's what you have to do. I remember coaching our whole congregation on these basics one day, and afterwards there was a young advertising executive who approached me after the service, and uh, he said, what kind of world do you live in that you could actually spend time every day, like meeting with God and listening for whispers? He, he said, I don't live in that kind of world. I commute to downtown Chicago, leave the house at 5.30 in the morning, get back at 6.30 at night. I just can't make room for that kind of thing in my life. And I said to him, well, uh, I make room for anything in my life that I think has value. And I think listening to God and hearing his promptings and whispers has a value. So I'm not trying to compare my schedule and yours. I'm just saying I've made room for this in my life. You've got a choice to make in your life. And he walked away. I thought maybe I'd never see him again. Many months later, uh, he came down and saw me after a service and his countenance was different. He just looked a little bit more centered and maybe a little less frenzied. And uh, he said, I wonder if you and your wife would come over to our house for a dinner. And I said, well, I'll have to check with the boss, but uh, I'll get back to you. And I did, and they lived in the area. And so Lynn and I went over to their home. And uh, we were having appetizers, and he tugged at my sleeve, and he said, come see something I've wanted to show you for a long time. And I didn't know what he was going to show me, but he took me to a room that overlooked his back deck, and there was a rocking chair, a really quality rocking chair. He said, that day you told me that maybe I should, you know, make time to quiet myself before God and read his word and listen to his whispers. He said, I, I went out and I bought a quality rocking chair. I love rocking chairs. And I decided I would make time in the morning to sit in that rocking chair and overlook my back deck, have a cup of coffee and just read God's word and see what would happen. And he said, I've been doing this virtually every morning since you gave me that challenge. Uh, several months later, I was quite surprised. I ran into th this man after a church service and he said, uh, could I have a private conversation with you? I'm thinking about leaving the advertising business. And I knew he had been very successful in, in that vocation. And I said, well, tell me about this. And he said, well, you know, I sit in that chair every day. And as I've been searching God's word and listening for promptings, uh, I just decided there's something of greater value that I'd like to do with the best hours of my day. And he said, I'm good at advertising, but God's been prompting me a little bit. Maybe, maybe I could help you build Willow. And I said, well, you know, no one's getting any salaries around here, and it's very hard work, and we don't know if the church is ever going to really make it, so I, I, can't, I can't promise you anything, really. And he said, I've done quite well in advertising. My savings can hold me over for a time. I said, well, you go back to that rocking chair, and you make sure this is of God, because I don't really want to take responsibility for your life and family and so. And uh, several weeks later, he came back, and he said, I resigned from my position downtown. He said, I'm ready to come to work tomorrow morning. And I said, really? <laughs> and he did. And he started working as an unpaid employee at Willow and was a fantastic staff member. And the church was able to get a little bit stronger and we were able to pay him a salary uh, again as, as the church uh, began to compile a little more resource. And then it was several years after that, he came into my office and uh, he said, I need to have a, a conversation with you. I think God's prompting me to leave Willow and help a friend of mine start a church in Colorado. I said, where did this all come from? He said, well, you know that chair, you know, I still sit in it every morning. And my friend really has a heart to, to start this church in Colorado and, and he needs help. And he said, uh, God's been prompting me. I think I'll go back into the advertising uh, vocation out west and maybe I can earn money to support the start of that new church and I said really you really think God's telling you to do this maybe you should go back to that chair for a little while and get confirmation of it of this kind of thing and so he did and several weeks later he came back and he said uh, God confirmed this is what I'm supposed to do so in just a few months he packed his family up and he moved to Colorado where he got a job in advertising and, and gave most of the money from his salary to the launch of that new church. 
And you would think that this story has a happy ending, but it was only a few years after the launch of that church in Colorado that he was sitting in that same chair one day and absorbed a doctor's report that said cancer had enveloped his body and it didn't look good. And he brought that doctor's report uh, right to that chair and prayed over it and asked God to do a miracle and a miracle in his case wasn't gonna happen, but he asked God to give him peace that passes human understanding. And God did answer that prayer. And uh, he faced a very difficult and painful death from the strength that he gained every day in that chair. And there came a day when they had to move him out of that chair and put him in a hospital bed. It was a very tough day. And he wasn't in that hospital bed very long and he died. Uh, the family asked if I would fly to Colorado and give the eulogy at his funeral. I did, it was a very uh, tough thing to do. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, after the funeral was over, I talked to his wife and uh, I said, what are you gonna do with that chair? And she said, well, we're gonna keep that chair in the family. You know, God changed Tom's life in that chair. God whispered to Tom in that chair. And uh, she was saying, we'd like to pass that chair from one generation to the next, to the next. But never underestimate what God can do in a chair or in the front seat of a pickup truck. Some of the carpenters who attend our church just meet with God and listen for whispers. Front seat of a pickup. Some people do it on a commuter train going downtown. And uh, other people will do it in a coffee shop. It doesn't matter where so much, just that you devote the time to quiet yourself, to listen to God, and to be open to what he might say to you.